Good morning, everyone. I am Stella Hewer from Edunique, the Stress Whisperer. Today, I'm going to do a follow-up video on boundaries. The previous one, we discussed what a boundary is and how boundaries can help us to gain control of our lives. Remember, for those of you that um, might have missed it, or if you remember, a boundary is, is the distance and the space between ourselves and another person. Now, physical boundaries are clear to see. Just like our home has a certain boundary, it's non-negotiable. So too, we have, a, our skin is a natural boundary, but the problem is emotionally, those boundaries are invisible. And we only make them known to others if they are clear in our own heads? Do we know what our own boundaries are? Do we have boundaries? The problem with boundaries is that if we do not have them, we become enmeshed in relationships. We can lose our own identity within a relationship. For example, if we think in terms of married people, yes, a, a, a couple, are one, so they are united and they are together, they are a we, but they're also an I. And sometimes in relationships, that I is lost, where the, where the couple become totally enmeshed um, and they lose their own identity and their own personhood. And if there's ever a breakup in that enmeshed relationship, that person finds it very hard to move on because they've lost their own boundary. So even in, in a marriage, there are certain boundaries as to who you are and who the other person is. The same is with children and families. This enmeshment and no boundaries is a very unhealthy way of being. So if we don't have boundaries, we can become enmeshed and we lose ourselves in relationships. But also, if our boundaries are too tight, that puts us behind a fortress and, and we don't build relationships. So it, it's, it's, it's difficult to establish a, a clear balance between letting people in and also keeping out unwanted behaviors and people who, who do not serve us in any way and who might actually be toxic in their relationship towards us. So it's all so boundaries is not about controlling other people. It's about protecting ourselves. So we have to keep that very clearly in mind. It's not about control. It's not telling someone you will do this because I don't tolerate that. One's not trying to control the others, one's establishing one's own boundaries. And one then has to maintain that boundary. But it has to be very clear in our own heads. What I want to say to you is that we have to be very careful. We Sometimes we set up a boundary or we, we tell someone, I won't tolerate this, I don't like this. But two weeks down the line, we give in. And we're back to square one. Do you know, it's very difficult to establish change of behavior if a person is inconsistent. That's why gambling works so well, because the reward system is unpredictable. So if we're losing and it's taking some time to win, the idea is that, well, it could just be the next time I'm gonna win something. And that is why in families, if we keep threatening our children and we don't have consequences and we give in, that inconsistency is, is a recipe for reinforcing bad behavior because the person will know they just have to wear you down enough and that you will give in. So it's very important if you're going to establish a boundary, don't establish it until you know clearly what it is and until you're ready to enforce it. So you have to know that your boundary is right. You need to honor your feelings. And if you find certain behavior disrespectful, unhelpful, and someone's interfering in your life or overstepping their boundaries, 
and certain certain behaviors upsetting then you need to set a boundary but don't set it before you're ready and don't set it unless you're willing to enforce the consequences of it and remember it's not about controlling the other person which means if you set your boundary and you do it in a kind respectful firm way you have no further control of how the other person is going to react. So as long as you, you know, I know, that if we do something kindly and firmly, so we make it clear, the consequences, how the other person is going to react, is actually not our responsibility. And the problem is that people who were used to going over into other people's boundaries or, or going violating our own very often they will not like someone drawing a boundary with them so it can lead to conflict it can lead to the loss of a relationship but let that be the other person's responsibility as long as we are just clearly stating what our boundary is because if we don't state it people cannot respect it and we don't have to stand on I don't stand on my wall on the perimeter of my property and yell to everyone this is my wall don't you dare step over so it's not about walking around proclaiming our boundaries but if someone violates them then we should really speak up right there and then and I know this is hard this is something I've had to learn I've had to learn to do sometimes it's taken years to have the courage to, to really confront someone or to or to stipulate what my boundary is. Because it's so easy just to be overwhelmed and to allow oneself to feel disrespected and to sit with those bad feelings because we don't want to hurt someone else's feelings. So it's about protecting ourselves. And it's about saying something kindly but clearly. For example, a boundary setting could be if someone's telling off-color jokes and it's not your scene, is to say, I really don't enjoy um, off-color jokes. If someone's yelling at you, you could say, I'm willing to discuss this when you stop shouting at me. I, I can't listen when you're shouting at me. And if the person continues to shout, you can't stop them shouting, but you don't have to be there. You can walk out. So you are reinforcing your boundary. I'm not talking about this. Um, I will discuss it when you stop shouting and when we can have a reasonable conversation. That's it. And then you use your feet to vote. You start walking. You walk out. Because you've stated what your boundary is. You don't re-engage until they're willing to talk about it in a calm, quiet way. So that is what boundary setting is all about. So be careful, set them only when you're ready and you're ready to enforce them. They are not infringing on the rights of others. They're not there to control and change others. They're there to protect yourself. And you have to be prepared to let go of the consequences. Because the consequences are there because you've respected yourself. As long as you haven't been disrespectful to the other person and you know that your boundary is correct, then you have to let go of the guilt or whatever else that keeps sucking one in because of the consequences of setting a boundary. And one has to really be strong and to have the courage to stand by one's boundaries. But it's all about maintaining control of our own life and making sure that we don't allow toxic behaviors to come in where we are tolerating so many things it's unbelievable if we often think about how we tolerate bad behavior from other people and we keep quiet um i know <laughs> in one instance it took me 19 years to state my boundary um with an employer um, I used to work for doctors long ago and the one was incredibly rude to me for no reason um, for years and I used to keep quiet and keep quiet and keep quiet and he was he was really downright 
unnecessarily rude. Anyway, one day, but this is like 19 years later, he's, he, I asked him a civilized question. I asked him something about a medical term because I was busy typing it, and I asked him about it, um, and he said to me, oh, suck that out of your thumb. So I sat there for a while, and then I thought about it, and I thought, today is the day. Because that remark, I, I wasn't caught doing anything wrong. I was asking something in the line of my work. It, that was outrightly rude. There's no explanation for it or justification. So I sat and I breathed deeply for a while and gathered my courage and realized, no, out of self-respect for myself, that is unacceptable behavior. And I've been tolerating it and allowing it, and that's a boundary violation. Even though that person was my boss. So what I did was I walked into his room. Um, I walked up to his room, knocked on the door and asked if I could come and talk to him. He said, yeah, sure, he was not expecting because I've been a doormat for, 13 year for 19 years. So uh, I just said to him, I would just like to say that I don't like being spoken to like that. I don't think that I deserve it. And he kept trying to jump like, oh, well, he had a sense of humor, but I wasn't going to jump wherever he was jumping. I stuck to my guns. I just stuck to the same thing. In fact, I repeated it. It's called the broken record. Works like a charm. I just said, I just want to say that I don't like being spoken to like that. I don't deserve it. Anyway, I can't remember how it ended, but it ended reasonably amicably. Like, And let me tell you, he was never rude to me again. But I always think that it was stupid that it cost me 19 years of misery before I found the courage to do it. But it taught me a big lesson. Number one, I didn't embarrass him. I didn't, I didn't talk to him in front of anybody else. I spoke to him respectfully on his own. And I just stated what I felt. I didn't say you rude and you make my life a misery. I didn't grab my bag and storm out or be cheeky. I just said, I just want to tell you that I don't like being spoken to like that. And let me tell you, he never did it again. And I had a reasonably good relationship with him after that. I remember even and when I left East London, then we had lunch together. Um, and with all the other girls in the office, I always kept contact with them once I'd left. So that's a great lesson uh, was for me that just stating how we feel and then letting the consequences go. There were no consequences except that he he never did that to me again. But there have been occasions where I've stated a boundary and it has meant the loss of a relationship. But we have to have the courage of setting our boundaries, of knowing what we need to do to emotionally protect us from those who violate our boundaries. I hope this is helpful to you. I think it's quite a difficult thing to do. We have to build up slowly um, with boundaries and start where it's easy for us to go. But it's part of self-respect. It's part of growth. It's part of differentiating ourselves from other people and looking after our emotional well-being. Well, that's my story for today. And as I said, I'm Stella from EduNique, the Stress Whisperer. And I do one-on-one -on -one consultations with people on stress management. So if anything here resonates with you and you'd like to book a consultation, please feel free to let me know. Thank you. Bye for now.